Unsure for your approach for the final big time leaderboard event? Discover the macro insights that you need to excel in round three, whether you plan to compete or just strategizing around it. This video is going to guide you through the critical economic and strategic layers that influence leaderboard, empowering you to make better decisions and outmaneuver the competition. In this video, grasp the why behind the Big Twin leaderboard event and create a better plan for round three. Also, I'll be giving away 10 preseason invite codes at the very end, so stay till the end. GMGM GM to all the new faces and returning strategists, but before we dive into the data, a quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You can lose money in crypto and NFTs. Also, the crypto world moves fast. Always double check the latest updates before making any decisions. The last video we talked about was covering the latest updates in round three. This is the second video in my leaderboard series to give you data and insights to help navigate the leaderboard event better. In an upcoming video, we'll dive into the specifics of estimated leaderboard points per actions and strategies for competing, but it's important to zoom out to a macro perspective first to better understand big time's reasoning behind rewarding certain in-game actions and pushing player behaviors over others. Understanding the why behind these decisions is key to making better decisions and grasping the risks that are involved in round three. Here's a high level overview of the points awarded for various in-game actions as we head into round three, including the new actions that we covered previously. First, ranking up, low points, prestige portal runs, medium points, time warden actions, high points, armory and forge actions, very high points, daily and weekly in-game bounty completion, medium points, seven day challenges ranging from low to very high, season milestones varying from low to very high, and midweek madness, which is TBA at this point. Looking at this, there are two main categories that they're incentivizing, rewarding active players who are playing the game and rewarding players who are active in the in-game economy. But from what it looks like, their focus is rewarding in-game the economic actions over regular in-game actions. Because we can see the only way to consistently get high or very high reward points is for crafting or from crafting up in higher rarities resulting in higher points, which is something that the big time team has stressed in the blog post. And quote, the points per action in round three of the leaderboard will closely mirror the approach we adopted in round two. We are particularly pleased with that round's outcomes. More importantly, players were significantly motivated to advance to the rarity tiers instead of solely focusing on crafting lower rarity items. But why this approach? While many players understand the underlying drivers, I believe it's critical to cover not just for the sake of leaderboard round three, but for the long-term viability of big time as a whole. If the in-game economy fails, it could lead to a significant decline or even a mass exodus of players similar to what we saw with early issues in games like Axie Infinity. Now let's cover the concept of a token sync. A token sync is essential for the health of a game's internal economy. It encourages players to use their tokens within the game, creating this cycle where these tokens are continually recycled back into the ecosystem, ensuring that they remain available for other players to earn. So why is a sufficient token sync or compelling way to use tokens in game? essential in crypto gaming. When players are incentivized to spend their tokens in game, they're less likely to withdraw them and sell them on exchanges. This is significant because when large amounts of tokens are sold off, it creates what is known as selling pressure. Why is this bad? Selling pressure increases the available supply of token in the market and without matching demand, it can lead to a decrease in a token's value. And in other words, too much selling pressure can drive down the price of big time. And recalling the basics of Econ 101, we understand that increased supply, if not met with increased or stable demand, will lead to a decrease in price. This is precisely the scenario that we want to avoid in big time. We've observed this in many crypto games, not just Axie Infinity, but it's a cycle that continues to repeat itself. When players do not have strong incentives to use their tokens in game, the, the economy becomes unbalanced and eventually collapses. The game starts to lose its player base and relevance and eventually becomes just another forgotten name as players move on to the next promising game for short term financial gain. Therefore, the leaderboard airdrop event isn't just about winning. It's about creating a sustainable economic environment within big time 
encouraging players to circulate and use tokens in a way that benefits the entire gaming ecosystem. I'm highlighting this because the leaderboard event is a key driver in encouraging players to spend their big time tokens in game. Grasping this concept is crucial because it helps you understand the different types of in-game actions that are likely to earn you more points from the big time team. Activities that involve using more big time token are typically rewarded with more points from what we've seen in the past. This is a deliberate strategy to foster certain player behaviors, specifically those that help regulate the game's economy and manage the supply of the token. Another aspect of the strategy is a phased distribution of token rewards instead of a lump sum reward for the airdrop, which is gradually released every week. This approach is also designed to prevent a sudden influx of tokens into the market, which could otherwise create, as you guessed, excess selling treasure and destabilizing prices, excess supply. Which brings me to a concern about the big time team and how they will be able to sustain the in-game demand for the token after the event. I've discussed this at length in previous videos, and I'll link them below for those who haven't caught up yet. But this video is just focusing on the leaderboard and how it fits into the macro landscape currently. Let's circle back to the actions that earn more points. Essentially, actions that require a higher use of big time tokens are likely to be more rewarding in terms of points. On the flip side, actions that don't require big time are less likely to yield significant points, aligning with the event's objectives. It makes sense that activities like running prestige portals or recharging hourglasses these aren't rewarded as heavily. Why? Because they indirectly lead to a potential increase in token supply without requiring in-game spending of big time. Again, to more token supply being pulled from the game and ultimately affecting the big time price. This is something I wanted to explain because there's a decent amount of people in the big time Discord that write or outright complain about not increasing points for these types of actions. But when you understand it from a macro perspective, it makes sense because that's what they're trying to do to balance out the economy. Yes, there needs to be some actions that reward in-game playing, which they've added some of that, but their focus is on creating a sufficient token sync to make sure that the balance of the economy stays stable. And then another benefit for this leaderboard event in theory is to drive up demand for the token where whales will buy it off exchanges and spend it back inside the in-game economy, circulating back the currency, which is big time in this case, to the players. Understanding this will not only help you with the leaderboard event, but how to navigate the risks in big time in general or any future crypto game that you play. Your success in this leaderboard event or reaction to the event will depend on not only your gaming skills, but how well you navigate and contribute to the in-game economy. Let me know what you think of the current state of Big Time's economy right now. And don't forget, this is the second video of four in the series. Next up, we'll be going over quick tips for getting a higher rank in round three. Also, here are 10 preseason invite codes to Big Time for anyone who needs them. They're also in the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll like this one. 